Do you see that viral video from, uh, is, is it live action or live action? Live action. Live action. See, I always, I always say one and then think it's the other. Where uh, this woman, she comes in and her boss and the manager, they're like, so we heard the good news. You know, we heard news. You're, you're pregnant. She's like, I am. And they're like, let us know there's anything we can do for you. We'll get you a flight. You know, whatever you need, flight out of state. We'll get you a really nice hotel. And she's like, flight out of state. And they're like, right, right. You know, <laughs> when do you think you get back to work? We're thinking a couple of weeks. And she's like, uh, and then after giving birth, they're like, oh, we, we meant, you know. So these companies, I think this one's obvious. They want to save money. It's cheaper just to have a woman go get an abortion than it is to actually provide benefits Pay for, for maternity leave as right. well as dependence on the health care. No, it's it's being spun as this feminist thing to pay for an employee's abortion. It's really just, uh, I mean, capitalism trying to get you back to your nine to five, which in other circumstances feminists would oppose. But because it enables abortion, they're actually for it. Kroger is one of the places that said that they would come and pay for abortions. I Tesla. Believe, yeah, Microsoft as well. There's a whole bunch of them. I encourage anyone who watches this to actually look up those lists of companies and stop shopping there because otherwise you are literally funding abortion. That's not hyperbole. You you are, are fi financing these employees' abortions. you got to vote with your dollar. I think a lot of people realize that you have a lot more power when it comes to deciding what you incentivize than just going to that ballot box once every four years. Yes. So uh, just to ask you directly, if you could have your way, what would happen? How can we take action on this? How can we move forward? If, if you... Uh, we're able to decide how we move forward. What would be the next step? Transparency, first of all. Yeah. So look, the way I look at it, we live in a free country. If you want with your own money to advance an environmental agenda or a social agenda, whatever that is, pro-life agenda, pro-choice agenda, whatever it is, if you want to do it with your own money, we live in a free country, you're free to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you're not free to do it with OPM, okay, other people's money, <laughs> okay? That's an expression we use it. We talk about that strive all the time, okay? You can't do it with OPM. So, so if you're going to do it with other people's money... There's a really simple standard. You just need to tell them you're doing it, and you need to get their consent. So what happens when every wealth manager, every 401k account in corporate America, every 401k plan manager, every pension fund manager goes and asks the teacher, the doctor, the nurse, the engineer, hey, are you cool with me using your money to vote in favor of a racial equity-based hiring system that's a effective quota system in corporate America? Most of them are going to have a pretty clear answer. They're going to say, hell no, I'm not. Now, for the 20% or the 10% who's fine with it, that's great. That restores integrity back into the system. And some of those people are going to say, you know what? I would trade off a few dollars of investment return if you actually make sure that these companies embrace pro-life causes. And if you're doing that with your own money, I'm fine with that too. But I would not be fine with an asset manager, even though I'm right of center. It doesn't matter. I don't think an asset manager should be using somebody else's money to fund a pro-life cause without the capital owner actually knowing it. So, so my that's ask is actually pretty though. simple. Transparency, disclosure, consent, and actually prosecute, bring civil action or otherwise against the people who violate those principles. It, that's the challenge, though. If they're not playing by the rules and you are, they're, they're winning. Right. Well, I, I'm, I'm, part, of a, part of the role of a market actor is also to raise hell and make sure that they are damn well playing by the same rules by the time we're done with this. And so this is a, this is a bottom-up revolution, not in our politics, it's, but it's, it's in our market because people are voting every day with their dollars. They just don't think of themselves as voting as they do once a year when they go to the ballot box every November. Yeah. Once they realize that, though, that knowledge is the first step to actually giving them choice— Make sure the other guy's feet are held to the fire, that they are playing by the same rules. We don't need to pass new laws for this, by the way. Most of these are violations, I believe, of laws that are already on the books. Basic fiduciary principles. If you're Sam Bankman Freed, you cannot use a customer's funds in a way that a customer did not agree to without his permission. That's the crime on offer. Well, I don't care if you dress it up, as he did actually, by the way, too, in an ESG clothing. You can say the same thing. You can't use somebody else's money to advance your own agenda without telling them you're doing it unless you get their permission. Same principles, just got to apply those standards even-handedly. I think red states are, are slowly, slowly beginning to wake up to it. I, and I think people really need to know about this because I would be pissed. My money's going to promote wokeness. But also, more importantly, I think people need to realize you're losing money because you're incentivizing a lot of this nonsense that doesn't make money. And at the end of the day, your retirement account is is losing on its investment. You want me to well, make it boil one step where they're just, just, just since while we're on the, on the kick of, of pissing you off here. So, so with one hand, okay, the Black Rocks of the world are pressuring Exxon and Chevron and others to effectively drill for less oil with emissions caps. Turns out those companies have to drop oil production projects to meet those net zero standards by 2050. 
Guess who's... Or no, no, let me ask you just a question what your net reaction is. You may know where I'm going with this, so you may probably get it right. Do you think those projects are still proceeding? Or do you think that they actually just got dropped in the interest of staving off global emissions? Which do you think it is between the two? Um, dropped. No. Wrong no. answer, actually. Projects are proceeding. They're just proceeding under new ownership. So the firms that are buying up these projects from Chevron include the likes of PetroChina on the other side of the world. Now you ask the final question, guess who's one of the large shareholders of PetroChina? It is none other than BlackRock, the very firm that was actually pressuring the Exxons and Chevrons of the world over here to drop those kinds of projects. That is how deep this runs. You don't know why? Because if you go to China and say, I'm going to establish an ESG agenda and scope three emissions targets, they're going to tell you to get the heck out and to shut the door on your way out because we built a great Chinese wall, the great wall that stops you from entering the Chinese market if you're going to mess with our companies. But actually, if you're also one of those firms that's doing it to the U.S., we'll roll out the red carpet. And that's exactly why BlackRock became the first foreign owner to win a license to sell mutual funds in China a few years ago because they were doing the bidding of the CCP. So, so this runs deep, right? And when you, ha- when you have sort of concentrated nodes of private public power in the United States, that's what lends it to capture even by other governments like the CCP in a truly decentralized free market system or in a truly decentralized democratic body politic, by the way. That doesn't lend itself to capture, including by foreign actors. But when you have that level of concentration of both capital, but also capital coordinated with state action, that's what lends itself to capture from abroad, and that's the game the CCP has actually mastered, too. This brings me to something I've been talking about for a very long time, because we have seen a lot of Western elites, a lot of Wall Street firms prop up China, and I think they're using China as a vessel, not only to test out their draconian, big brother, totalitarian uh, policies, but more importantly, I I think China is the direction the whole world is going in, and we see individuals like Bill Gates literally advise the Chinese government. Of course. I don't think that's that's a coincidence here. What do you think is really going on here? How do you think this is developing? Because for me personally, I'm seeing this as an attempt by many elites to make China as an example for the rest of the world. Klaus Schwab even openly talks about this. Bill Gates openly compliments China with their zero COVID policies when they're actually creating humanitarian crises and violating human rights on so many different levels. So to me, China is the playground of the elites. They're using it for uh, the future for everyone. Is, is that yeah, correct or is that too much? I, I view it uh, just in reverse. Whereas I think that when people who you call the elites are really just the circus monkeys. Okay, Tim Cook and Larry Fink are Xi Jinping's circus monkeys. He will say jump, they will ask how high because it actually comes down to money. Right, so, so, so the game we played in this country, and by the way, this is not, this is not just Democrat Republican thing. This is Democrats and Republicans, by the way, starting in the 1990s, had this philosophy of democratic capitalism in the United States. The way it went was, we're going to export Big Macs and Happy Meals, and somehow we're going to imagine that spreads democracy to places like China. We're going to use our money to get them to be more like us. What China realized, and they're always playing a longer game than we are, is that actually, we can turn that on its head. We can use our money, access to our market, to get America to be more like us, or one step better, they realize they could use our own money to get us to be more like us because we're the ones who invested there in the first place. Well, and so- there's that old neoliberals, neoliberal idea that as a nation progresses economically, that naturally liberty and democracy will follow. So mm-hmm. that was the idea with all the foreign it, it direct investment. It was dead wrong. It's dead wrong. Yeah, That's yeah. the thing. That's the idea with the foreign direct investment to China. Not only do we get all these cheaper goods, but hey, we also get to democratize them. We get to make them exactly Western like us. Uh, you know, I, gr- I grew up in China partially. Uh, oh, you did? And, okay. Yeah. Um, not only in Hong Kong, but also in Shanghai. And it was shocking, absolutely unbelievable, the amount of progress and development that happened while I was living under there. But the thing is, they I think they overestimated the draw that American neoliberalism will have. Because as China has gotten more developed, it's actually, I mean, people say it's communist. It's not really communist. It's the strange uh, hybrid of state-run authoritarianism. They're actually seeing the decadences of the West, and they are using the capital that the West has essentially transferred over to them in order to combat it directly, right? And we see this uh, through TikTok. Chinese TikTok is not the same as Western TikTok. You go on Western TikTok and they are offering you up videos of trans, non-binary, whatever. Chinese TikTok is actually educational. Like right? Math and engineering. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's not an accident. Uh, China is very aware of the societal ills that the left has, or sorry, that the West has, basically the same thing. And they're actually trying to encourage them abroad while limiting it at home. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday 
Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.